Hi and welcome to this video of the Tanberg Model 1200X and more specifically a problem which this machine has with this record and playback switches. First a slight introduction. This model, the Tanberg 1200X reel-to-reel -reel recorder, was introduced by Tanberg in 1968 and was the final offering really of this series of, of grey top and wooden case uh, machines with metal buttons. Uh, machines after this tended to have plastic buttons and weren't really as robust as this earlier series. At the same time it marks a first. It's the first Tanberg that was completely transistorized. It doesn't have any electronic magic eye indicators here. It's got meters and it's complete, uh, completely transistorized. It was the first first of that um, first machine to be designed in that way. But I'm going to focus today on these switches here, the uh, play, record, and amplifier switches. There are two of these. Being a stereo machine, there's one switch for each channel. And with these you set uh, how the amplifier is configured, either in playback mode, or record mode, or amplifier mode. Amplifier mode basically means that you record, uh, you don't record anything, you can have the tape stopped uh, or no tape in the machine at all, but basically it amplifies the signal from the input of the amplifier and plays it back in the loudspeaker. Uh, in some cases the amplifier position is slightly, uh, slightly different. In this case, the way the switches are set now, it amplifies whatever comes from the left-hand channel and duplicates it on the right-hand channel. Uh, that means that it actually works as partly as a channel selector. In stereo playback, you'd have both switches in the play mode. If you want to listen to the left channel, you leave the left, left channel in the playback mode, but put the right channel in the amplifier mode. And vice versa for listening to the right-hand channel only. If you put both switches in the amplifier position, then it will amplify whatever is coming in through the inputs, microphone, radio, whatever. But one problem with this is that, as uh, I just mentioned, that this actually works as a track selector. So these will be switched back and forth quite a bit, which is slightly cumbersome. Most machines would just have a single rotary switch or a couple of push buttons. But here you have two switches that you have to control. The main problem with this is that the design of these switches is not too good. So let's have a quick look at what this actually looks like inside. Here we have a Tanberg Model 1200X again, uh, but this time upside down and with the case removed. If we look at how these switches are actually designed, we can see in here that there is a PCB uh, standing up on the main PCB, which contains the switches. Now if I move these back and forth, you can see contacts moving back and forth along this PCB here, and that makes uh, that, that's, that's what creates the, the contact uh, mechanism. Problem here is that, first of all, the contact pressure is very low, meaning that oxide buildup in dirt tends to have rather a pronounced effect, and also that the, um, the material that these, these uh, contacts are made of, I'm not sure what it is, I don't think it's just copper, there's probably some sort of plating, but it's a plating that doesn't necessarily wear off, but I think it oxidizes fairly easily. And what's that got to do with anything? Well, first of all, you generally get a bad connection. Uh, after a while, you get oxide buildup, you get dirt on these connectors, and they tend to scratch, uh, create scratchy sounds as, the, as you move them back and forth. Uh, the problem is that that effect is made worse by a, uh, a design flaw, you could say, in the amplifier. So if we go over to the schematics, the schematics for the Model 12 are here. Uh, it's quite a complex machine, and we will focus on one part of the schematics only, that is the uh, playback and equalization amplifier up here. The signal comes in from the playback head over here, and is amplified, goes through an equalization circuit, and finally, um, uh, which is connected in the feedback loop of, of, the, of the amplifier stage, and then it exits here uh, towards the head or the playback amplifier, depending on if you're recording or playing back. These black areas here, they're the contacts uh, of the record playback amplifier switch, and they are drawn as gray uh, fields here, which sort of is supposed to mimic the way these contacts actually look on the printed circuit board in the machine. Problem here, the real problem is that if uh, these contacts here are at a DC potential. Uh, this point here is about 14, or sorry, 12 volts. 
and working working your way through these connections you realize that this point these points here on the on the contacts are also at 12 to 16 volts um, and that means that if there for some reason is an intermittent connection in this connector here not only will you get a scratching effect from the fact that the, that the connection is broken but you also get a, a 12 volt pulse basically fed into the audio channel or a 12 volt scratch you could say which creates loud, loud pops and clicks in the loudspeaker when switching channels. Now 12 volts is quite a lot compared to the signal level which is I don't know maybe half a volt or something like that so you really get a loud sound and of course you can turn the volume down but it's still very annoying even if you have to, even if you can turn the volume down, it's annoying to have to turn it back up again afterwards. So the question is, what can be done about this? Well, there is actually something that can be done about this, and we will see that here. If we add some capacitors to this circuit here, and there's one capacitor added up here and one down here, that will result in these switches here being at, at ground potential, apart from the signal level, of course, and that in turn means that any any uh, glitching or bad connection you get when switching the contacts will only be heard as a minor, minor, uh, minor noise, not as a, as a great click and pop. Another problem with this machine, going back to the, to the diagram here, is a capacitor which is located, let's see if I can find it, it's located right here. And this capacitor uh, is uh, feeds the the uh, is, is fed feeds the the signal from the amplifier uh, or DC blocks the the signal from the amplifier. Problem is here that the grounded side of this uh, this capacitor, where if you work your way through these switches, you'll find that it's only it's only connected to something in certain cases, which means that uh, if the amplifier is not if this point is not grounded properly. Uh, then the capacitor, losing its charge after a while, will tend to build up a 12 volt. Uh, it will tend to, to become 12 volts on both sides, and when it eventually is connected to something on the right-hand side, you get a loud click and pop from that. Now that can be fixed quite simply by just putting a resistor in the circuit here to simply keep, it, uh, keep the capacitor charged. Now adding capacitors to a single chain like this can have dubious effects as many audiophiles might, 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 uh, might comment on. However, here the advantage of have putting something like that in the circuit is much larger than, the, than the, any disadvantage. Besides, this is not a hi-fi machine, it's a tape recorder that's uh, approaching the 40-year, no, it's past its 40-year mark, uh, so it's most more for nostalgic purposes and it's more important to get a, a, a switching arrangement that works rather than the best possible sound, and I Frankly, I don't think adding these capacitors would make much of a difference, as there are quite a few electrolytic capacitors in the signal chain anyway. Finally, there's, there's one minor point here, and that has to do with the fact, the way that the PCB is designed. It's not really uh, nothing you can really see in the schematics, but the way the, the switching of the head works is when you switch between record or playback and, and, and record, you get a slight... Uh, you get slight clicks in the in the uh, signal because of the grounding arrangement, but you can't really see that in the schematics here. I've just uh, shown what 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 can be done to fix it. And going over to the actual PCB, all these modifications can be made on the PC on the back of the PCB, uh, which is great because removing the PCB from this machine is a bit awkward. You need to remove a few screws and a few linkages and everything like that. Uh, so what have I added here? Well, here are the two capacitors that I had circled in red. Two for one channel, two for the other channel. And then there are these resistors here that I mentioned before. And then here, this orange wire here is the rerouting of the, of the ground signal, the ground wire uh, connected to the, uh, in con conjunction with the uh, playback head switching. So if we zoom in closer, basically what's, what's, what's been done here is that there have been a few tracks cut here in various places and then uh, wire, either jumpers have been added and uh, or, or, or components have been added here in order to achieve the desired function. So there we are, that's one modification. I'll be scanning the, the uh, both a, a, a schematic view of this PCB and of the schematics and, and putting a link up on the, on the video so you can see uh, how to do this for yourself if you want to. So, there we have it, the uh, Tanberg 1200X, a great machine, but with one Achilles heel, namely the record playback amplifier switch, which, apart from cleaning, can do with a slight redesign, and that's what I've attempted to, 
accomplish with these modified schematics here. Okay, thank you for watching and goodbye.